January 2007, a raging wildfire sweeps through Malibu, California. A series of seaside mansions burned Monday night in Malibu. That's just north of Los Angeles, home to movie stars and other high rollers. 300 firefighters, a Black Hawk helicopter, and 40 engines deployed, fighting furiously. But Santa Ana winds, more than 50 miles per hour, pushed the flames, driving them toward the beach homes. Now look at the flames It took only minutes the for all home. these multi-million dollar homes in Malibu to lay in ruins, including this house belonging to actress Suzanne Summers. Suzanne and Alan were out of town as the fire raged. They watched helplessly on TV as their home burned to the ground. The next morning, a devastating sight. As they survey the damage and realize nothing is left, a lifetime of memories lost forever. What did you lose that you missed the most? Uh, the books, the handwritten books. Nature, you know, in a, in a minute, it just, when it decides it wants what it wants, there's no stopping it. This house was gone in nine minutes. But out of tragedy, Suzanne's spirit and determination shone brightly. There's not a death in the family, and, I, you know, it's, we'll rebuild, and I really think that we'll learn something great from this. And what else can you do with a tragedy, but um, look for the opportunity to grow spiritually and emotionally, and I know that we'll learn something great. It was a beautiful house. It was a beautiful place to live. That tragedy started a quest for Suzanne and Alan to rebuild not only the safest, but also the most non-toxic home they could. That quest leads them back to the beach today. Well, Alan and I vowed that we were going to rebuild again in this beautiful spot, but I don't ever want to go through a fire like we experienced, and how do you avoid that? Wood is wood, wood burns, right? Well, I have found a guy who's um, a very unique and original kind of guy uh, <laughs> from Brooklyn originally. <laughs> He's got a company called Eco Building, and he says he has wood that is uh, fire resistant, is that right? This is Steve Conboy. How are you? Good. Now, the wood that you make is, um, resistant to fire it, it will burn eventually but you got a better shot at it not burning up in nine minutes like our house did well as we look around the site and we <laughs> see all the things that burned everything eventually burns uh -huh. uh, you look at the twin towers with the steel uh, but if we can build houses with lumber which is a renewable resource and then we can put an eco-friendly protection around the lumber so that it reduces ignition time and limits the run of the flame, and then reduces the smoke. So as your fire came in and jumped in, we, right. want, it, we want it to jump to another house. Yeah, right, right. Right? And that's what would happen. It would say, this is too hard. I'm going to go over there and try that one. Yeah, it's amazing that fires will pick the most vulnerable buildings to implode. Well, ours was an old house. I mean, old by California standards, maybe 40 years old, and the wood probably was rotting and, and susceptible. But you were talking earlier about uh, how wood has changed over the years. Can you tell me um, about that? Yeah, you know, basically the housing boom started after World War II in Levittown, Long Island. And we built fast. And we built all the way up until 2006 with an explosive boom. We didn't start reforestation early enough. Um, so the old growth timber now that the government limits the cut because we're trying to preserve ecosystems, um, there's a limited supply. So we're building houses today, 90% of the houses are built with juvenile lumber that we grow in one third the time. So what's so bad the, about that? The science is great uh -huh. that we have reforestation to protect the ecosystem and we can keep up with the housing demands, uh, but it's created new problems. What are the problems? Well, because it doesn't have the strength of the old growth in bending values, uh, we have to take things and glue them together to get the strength. Like we make I-beams and we make laminated beams to ho hold the house up. Uh -huh. Where we used to use a solid timber, today we don't use solid timbers. Oh. So we glue things together and they're glued together with phenolic resin and MDI, which makes them very highly explosive. So not only that, but they're off-gassing uh, chemicals into the house. You're breathing it in, right? Yeah, like if you see that video that I shot last week. Incredible how, video. How fast that, that building went up. Right. We're going to show that. You know, that that's uh, one of the, the products 
that is highly explosive. It's called OSB, it's Orientated Strand Board. And what we do is we take juvenile uh, commercial thinning, chip it down and glue it together with these glues and resins to keep up with the housing demands because we have to use it for sheeting on the roof, the walls and the floor. Mm -hmm. So it's great that we can keep up with housing demands with renewable resource, but we have to look at new technology because of the problems it did create, which to make buildings more vulnerable to fire. So how did you come up with this process of making wood that is uh, somewhat resistant to fire? And when I say somewhat, I'm, I'm saying that from an impressed place because I was watching the video and I saw the two uh, kind of shacks that you built, the one of natural lumber and the one of yeah. your lumber. It's pretty remarkable because the one made from your lumber almost put itself out, whereas the one next to it just disintegrated. How did you come up with this? Mine went out, it smoldered for 30 minutes uh -huh. and then went completely out. Right. Are you just brilliant? <laughs> well, I had a choice. I'm from Brooklyn, right? So I could have went in to make a pizza all freaking building buildings. <laughs> and they have a lot so, of pizza in Brooklyn. So, I'm a carpenter. Okay. So I got around a lot of wood and I touched a lot of wood and then, you know, there's a radical, unbelievable problem with mold when it comes to construction defect lawsuits. Right, right, right. So these lawsuits became an epic center in California. And I knew that somebody had to invent something to at least defend against those. And then to watch these firestorms every year in California, it's crazy. Yes. So, um, well, I want to build here uh, again because we were just so happy uh, in this spot. Um, but Malibu is uh, a fire zone. It, I almost feel like it will happen again. I, once you have a fire here, I, you figure, well, I'm through that. But I've run into so many people who've lost two and three homes. So I want to build a house that if it comes, I can go, come and get me. You got it. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of I... things we can do with the house. Yeah? Yeah, you know what's amazing is, it's people like you that are gonna help consumers ask the right questions. Because the contractors keep doing the same thing. Right. Can you picture that thousands of houses were burned down in San Diego and everybody rebuilt with raw lumber? The same thing, I know. And Colorado right now, the first houses are going up with raw lumber. Well, it doesn't make any sense, and even who we're working with here, uh, there, uh, there's a bit of resistance because we said, no, we heard about this guy, Steve right. Comboy, right. who's got this great lumber. It doesn't make any sense, you know, the definition of insanity. Yeah, keep, keep doing the do same thing. Same thing over and over, which yeah, doesn't expect work. expect right. to change. <laughs> exactly. Right. So I want to build a house that if it comes, I can have a somewhat peace of mind that um, I could save my house. Is See, that, the are you my guy? The contractors are so used to buying from the same people. Right. And they don't want anybody new in that relationship because it starts to become transparent. Yes, yes. And, and it's like the seatbelt, right? right? It was out, the invention was out a long time before it became the law, uh -huh. and we never used them. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right. So until right. the code gets behind it. Until you're it, in a six car pileup, you go, you know what, I was glad I had that seatbelt. Yeah. Belt. Right. So it's your kind of shows are gonna teach people that you wanna embrace technology, rather than staying stuck in what we used to do? Correct, absolutely. And, and when uh, you look at the amount of fire in the United States this year, I mean, we've had a lot of natural disasters. Um, I think that what you are doing is right on the money. You know, sometimes it's being in the right place at the right time with the right idea. I think you're in the right place at the right time with the right idea. I'm glad so, you're doing what you're doing. Well, after all this great information, if we don't tell them where we can find you, it's gonna be very frustrating. So is there a website? There's a lot of websites, but the main website will take you everywhere, so that's ecob.net. ecob.net. Thanks so much for coming today. We will be right back.